My dear friends, my guest for today is Mr. Stephen DeCesare, a young man who's very much involved in his parish at Holy Cross on Hartford Avenue in Providence. He's involved as a music director there and uh, many other involvements uh, that you're going to find very interesting, I'm sure. Stephen, welcome to Rejoice in Hope. Welcome, Father. Thank you. <laughs> You're young and vibrant and involved in a lot of things in our community. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your background, your family, and uh, how you got involved, especially in, in church music and liturgical. Well, um, Holy Cross has been my home parish since, you know, since I was a kid. And, you know, my family went there and my grandparents' family went there, but even when it was a chapel. So um, I would join the choir, the adult choir, when I was around 15, and then it just started taking off. Where I started, you know, with uh, the organ lessons and everything else, and I figured, well, let's. Write. When I finally took over, and then I started to write the music for all of them, and it's like just started. Rolling Stone catches no moss type of thing, and it's like I've never stopped. <laughs> so you're you're doing a lot of composing, aren't you? I do, yeah. <laughs> how uh, I've often wondered how uh, I know Alex Peliquin well, you know, and mm. uh, and Alex I know has a, a vision of a truth that he wants to express when he's writing his music, mm -hmm. and he takes it from the Psalms or he'll take it from from mm -hmm. some text of Scripture. Do you do the same thing too? You you think of a a religious truth that affects the the minds and hearts of people, and then you put music to it to try to bring that truth uh... well actually what I do take a lot of it from the, you know, right from the smack from the Bible. You know, a lot because of the there's Psalms. So many rich things there's there a lot of stuff I can on. take from it, but and then there's just stuff that, I mean, I'm just like I could be dusting the piano or something, and just something clicks in here, and then I'm going, hmm, that may be interesting. So I just try it out, and it's you know, and it seems to work, especially with the kids. Because the kids nowadays, I mean, because they, when they go to Mass, they go, Oh, I can't stand this stuff. It sounds like we're in a funeral Mass or is it like boring, you know, type of thing. So I've been trying to, like, even the old hymns, I've been getting them and, like, just revamping, the, you know, keeping the same words, especially the ones before Vatican II. And I've been getting them because they have real nice, rich words, and they go back to what a lot of the stuff that, you know, we try and teach the kids, and then just revamp the melodies, and they're having a ball. So you you write these things now? Do you publish them too, or do you just write enough for your own? Uh, Actually, use I got one published. I got one published, one published. Um, from uh, World Library Publications, the ones that we, uh, the missalettes that we have used. Uh, they just published this one of my Christmas tunes. Uh, it's called "Love the Fathers Love Begotten." Actually, it's an old chant, and I just revamped the tune. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's on the uh, the Christmas cassette. Yes, but you've done many hundreds of others, haven't you? That you oh. use with your own choir? Is that <laughs> yeah. what you do with them? We do. I mean. I hate to say it, but a lot of, because when that Sister Act movie came out, they go, what, you know, we should start getting into stuff like that. And I go, that's going a little too overboard. So what I did was, I said, well, let's see what I can do with at least getting the kids involved a little bit. And I started incorporating just a little bit, just a you know, nice little rhythm here and there. And they seem to love this. And then, especially with the parents coming and singing with the kids. Because that seems to help them along. It gives the kids encouragement to keep yeah, going on. Tell us about that. Now, you have a family choir. It's not only a children's mm -hmm. choir or an adult choir. You bring the whole families in We together. are the first parish, I guess, in the whole country to ever think of this thing. Because now that's caught on with uh, the parents and their kids come and sing in this one group. We have about, I'd say about 15 families and about 30 or so people in this. And it's like it's... They, they're loving it, and it's like the kids feel good from the support, and the parents can support the kids, and, it's, they, and the parents love the music. And they go, Stephen, most we've been singing your stuff. <laughs> and uh, it's like, hey, fine. And, and they like it. They like uh, this stuff. Yeah, it's like, cool. Uh, and you get the people in the pews, too, to, uh, to participate. I'm almost having much. them dance in the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think our whole liturgy is, is geared toward having people participate, and music certainly helps um, that. It certainly helps The thing, that. I mean... The, pe the thing with the people is, if, if you can tell if they really love the piece, like especially like they've, that Here I Am, Lord, and that Be Not Afraid song that everybody seems to like. It's like, okay, let's see if I can get towards the songs that they like, especially, you know, the style. And then they all start singing. They all start, if you can get the people to sing, they get to, they feel that like they're part of the mass a lot more. Yeah, oh, they do. It's like, because one thing that bothers me to no end is just seeing these people, a lot of them go through the motions. It's like, no, you don't go through the motions, not at mass. Yeah. I mean, church is a lot more than that, especially at least to me. And then, you know, and then with the music, at least it pumps them up a little bit. And it's like, so, oh, yeah, there is more than just, you know, reading the book, kneeling down, sitting up, standing up, yeah. you know? But does it bring them to the truths that you're expressing? That's what Actually, that might, yeah. you know, you have a, a, at the Mass, the real big thing is that you have Christ present there in the Eucharist, and, mm -hmm. and you offer, he offers the, the, the feelings of the people to the Lord, and they receive the blessings, and all. that's all uh, the great blessing that we receive is to be united with Christ in the mm -hmm. Eucharist. 
Do you think the music really directs people to that? A good portion of it does. So that I when mean, they leave church, they feel that they've been united with the Lord and yeah, with each they, other. Yeah, they really feel that they've got something good. out of it. Because, yeah. I mean, I think a lot of the stuff that, like, the older hymns, the way they were done, is, like, they don't, they don't feel moved. Yeah. They don't feel like they're real. But nowadays, especially while I've been trying to get the people involved, because we keep saying, you know, like, clap your hands or, you know, even sing the refrain, because they're not hard. And it's like, even the songs that they even knew when they were little kids themselves, and I just revamped, just go... Oh yeah, I remember that, but it's not the same melody. No, but it's the you know the meaning is still there. That's good. I mean, especially when I write, I make sure that you know Jesus and the Eucharist and whatever is not taken out. Good. And the kids, especially because this one song, in fact, the tape that you and I will be doing, because uh, it centers all on that my daddy Jesus part. It's like, in fact, there's a person that you and I know. I'm not going to mention the name. Uh, it said that because of music and because of what we've been doing, she's felt like that Jesus is not this big boom, boom, boom type thing. You know, it's like someone who has, you know, the compassionate heart, yeah. someone who at least is That's more, right. she's more connected to it, right. to him, I should say. You know, so, and even the kids feel a lot better. And even when I stop playing them, they'll go, oh, why are we singing that song too? And, you know, and they, yeah. they really get into it. Yeah. And I think the, the purpose we come to church too is to not only get something out of it, but to give something to it. And if people are, are singing and, and uh, joining in creating the spirit that is there, then they're, mm -hmm. they're giving themselves to the liturgy, and the liturgy gives themselves to God. And uh, so I think you're accomplishing what you, uh, what you want to accomplish with that. Tell me about these tapes. You mentioned the tape that we're going to be making together. Mm. And, uh, uh, the, uh, the, that's probably on the market very soon now. And uh, what are the other tapes that you've done? You've done two or three. I've done uh, the third one is just about to get released. It's my love songs. I figured you know I have a fun tape of something that's not my religious They're stuff. They're cassettes now. Are These they? are cassettes. Mm -hmm. CDs are too expensive to make. And yeah. plus, I've noticed a lot of people don't have CD players, so I said I'll do the cassettes. And plus, you can fit a lot more. I've noticed. Especially in automobiles and all that. Yeah, uh, and they can hear it. And um, the first one was called "Remember Me," and that got done because I wrote a uh, requiem mass uh, for a friend of mine that died a few years ago in a tragic accident. So I wrote this particular song and, and I've been playing it at funerals when I play a funeral at Holy Cross and it's like, Stephen, I want this song on a tape. Can you put this on a tape for me? I got so sick and tired of making these tapes. Yeah. So I said, let me just make another tape and make it right. Yeah. So I made like a tape of like 14 songs and they all love the songs. And then the next one that I did was a Christmas tape uh, with Father Leonardo and Father Azarone from St. Mary's. And they, because I did with the whole Christmas theme, and it's like I did it, like basically how we do for Mass is like one reading, song, reading, song, reading, song. And all traditional hymns, because I said, Santa Claus is taboo. I said, I am not having him on this. Santa Claus has nothing to do with Christmas. Not yeah. in my tape. Yeah. So he, I took him off, and then everybody loves these tapes. Good. It's like, oh, we can just pop them in, and we'd be bopping to the tunes. And, it's okay. like, and you know the thing is, they're catching on, and, they, and actually I'm finding them more attendance to church. Yes. And they're actually they're attending the, you know, receiving the communion of the sacraments, and they understand what's going on. Because mm -hmm. a lot of things that the kids well, don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's a great goal to have because they, uh, many times those uh, kids don't have much chance at home to learn about it. No. So, so if they come to church and have an experience like that, that's good. And you have the advantage at Holy Cross. Uh, you're a musician and your pastor's a musician also. Yeah. Father, Father Anthony Mancini <laughs> is, the, blessed with that one. <laughs> is the, the, the musician of the diocese now. He has the, the big concert choir and, and, yeah. and, and orchestra and all the play at the cathedral. But he, uh, he's very delighted, I suppose, with what you're doing with music at Holy oh, Cross. He's, you know, he, he, it's like a concert being given at Holy Cross every time we do something with the kids. Because yeah. it's like the kids are getting into it. And, pl and even when, when he comes around, especially the kids that start singing the music, he notices, like, they know the prayers better. Mm -hmm. like all, you know, especially the big four. Because that's, I've noticed, with a lot of the other kids, is that they, they're not too sure of how they go and stuff. So, but when they start singing all this stuff with something they can relate to, they know them. Like this. Mm -hmm. And they and they know the liturgy of the mass, and plus they understand what's going on. And he's ecstatic. Yeah. And I'm going, oh, good, at least something's good coming out of this. <laughs> you were there with Father Farley before too. And oh Father, yeah, Father he's, a, he's another hot sketch. Yeah, he, he was very supportive <laughs> of your ministry and uh, and helped you a lot with it. Oh too. yeah, he's he he goes. Go ahead, do what you want to do. Go, go, go ahead. You want to do that? That's fine. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> well, that's good. It's using the talent that you've got, and obviously you've got that talent. And to reach out to young people these days is so very important because they, they can be bored with liturgy and everything. Well, keep up your enthusiasm. Our time is up, but we're, we're grateful to you for coming here and joining us and, and telling us about your experience. I think a lot of our viewers are going to be able to take that home to their own parishes and say, mm. uh, we we got to listen to some of Steve's tapes, and uh, we've got to listen to some of his compositions. And, well, more uh, important, they've got to get involved in their church. And get involved. Get involved. That's right. Well, you're doing your part to help them involved. <laughs> yeah, so thanks very much, Steve, for being Thank you, here. Father. Thank you, my dear friends, for, uh, for listening, and, and may God bless you and your loved ones always. Stay tuned now, my dear friends, for this special presentation. For centuries, artists have been depicting the Last Supper. 